Wisdom Zigglings, Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers, welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom, so we got astrology. <laughs> My name is Tanya Lasagna, back again with another video, learning together all the celestial sauce and nodal noodles into something digestible, and today we are discussing it, the Virgo New Moon. We have here before us perfecting today as I record a four degree Virgo new moon. This is an interesting one, folks. And why is that, do you ask? Well, many reasons, of course. Before I jump on into it, make sure you are subscribed if you are not already. Also, go ahead and hit the like button on this video as it helps the channel grow. And last but not least, feel free to leave a comment down below letting us know how you've been experiencing this Virgo new moon energy. What have you been feeling? How have things been going? Let us know down below. So that is going to be all of the Virgo business right here, my friends, where you see the sun and the moon conjuncting. Now, with that said, Mercury is the ruling planet of Virgo, right? And where do you see him, her? You see her, him, Mercury, at one stinking degree of Libra at this point in time. And how interesting it is that Mercury, at the same time that we're having a new moon in Mercury's sign, is also in a few different tight aspects. First things first, Mercury is in opposition with Jupiter, and that's by a six degree orb. So I'm not really like too freaked out about that or anything, but it is worth noting, certainly. And then we also have at the same time with a much tighter degree orb, a three degree range of difference, this conversation with Mars, which mind you is a harmonious one because that blue line indicates a trine, right? So you can see a trine between Mercury and Mars at the time of this new moon in Virgo. And we're paying attention to Mercury because Mercury is the ruling planet of Virgo. So what does this really mean? Well, let's just start by breaking this down. New moon in Virgo, we got a new energy coming in. There's a new beginning. Every time the divine mother, divine father join, there's new stuff happening in our lives. That's just how it works. Now, this is in the sign of Virgo, so it has to do with Virgo-ish things. It's back to school time for anybody who is going back to school or has a child going back to school. It is definitely the time of year where we're starting to feel the difference in the seasons between the fixed Leo energy of summer and that cardinal energy of Libra and autumn beginning. So there's like a change in the air in general, okay? But Virgo is the sign of brains. Virgo is the sign of consciousness um, in the kind of sense of being aware of the daily environment around us because it's very like mental, but it's also very grounded in the earthly environment, seeing as it's an earth sign, right? So with that, Virgo is also about the kind of idea of fixing or solving things, especially um, more like earth related or bodily related things, physically related things. You find a lot of people who have a lot of Virgo energy go into animal care as well because Virgo is the sign of small animals. So you have this kind of energy of the body health. It could be a holistic health practitioner, an herbalist, a witch, if you you identify with that word a doctor an acupressurist somebody who combines skill with this idea of improvement or addressing an issue virgo is very diagnostic so regardless of whatever you're doing with this energy or whatever you do on the day-to-day you're going to be feeling like, yeah, you know, I want to improve my health right now. Maybe I'm going to keep on with this exercise routine and really keep my fitness level going through autumn. Or maybe you're saying, yeah, I really want to be mindful of the habits that I'm engaging in around the everyday environment of my life. Or maybe my nutrition is really going to keep on being really good. Or maybe I'm working on my mental health and I'm going to be pretty consistent with that over the next month or whatever. Whatever it is for you, you're likely to be thinking about um, really kind of grounding some practical skill set for the purposes of improvement. So that's the Virgo new moon part of it, right? But we have this other stuff going on. We have Mercury, as I said earlier, in Libra, 
and Mercury's in this relationship with Jupiter and Mars at this time. And at the same time, Mercury, because we're paying attention to that, why? Because Mercury, this purple planet, is the ruling planet of Virgo, the sign. Mercury is also the ruling planet of Gemini, the sign, okay? So we read Mercury to get more detail on what the new moon energy is going to involve. So the other thing, though, before I get into Mercury is that the new moon itself, you see that red line, everybody? That's called a square, and that is being made between the new moon and Mars over here in Gemini. So Mars and Gemini, are we sensing a theme? Mars and Gemini is touching Mercury by a trine, and it's touching the new moon by a square. So we have some mixed energy, to say the least, coming off of Mars right now. Both Mars and Mercury are freshly into new signs. So this is like a new beginning kind of energy because also new in the sign of Virgo is the sun as well as the moon today, right? So we have some fresh energy all the way around. It's definitely a different season in the air, not like a literal season, but like an astrological season. So let's tune into Mars for a second. Mars is going to show us in the sign of Gemini, hey, this new moon is going to involve mental stimulation. I knew that there was already mental stimulation from this Virgo new beginning thing, but really though, Mars in Gemini is all about getting the mental party going. So if you're somebody who likes wordplay, if you're somebody who really likes to just use your mind to research things or to gain your own skills, to grow your own skills, to be um, somehow using your hands in a more productive way. That is all Mars and Gemini stuff because Gemini rules the hands of the body and it is also the sign of skill building. Mars, of course, motivating us to do those things. Now, at the same time, that motivation doesn't come without a cost because of that square, that red line there between Mars and the new moon. So the good news about the red line, the square there, it gives extra energy, extra zhuzh. It gives you an extra push, a little extra motivation, perhaps. Um, the negative side of it is it might feel like it's more painful somehow, or maybe it's like a struggle to engage. But once you do engage, you get more reward. Maybe things don't come as quickly as you would have liked that you're trying to attain or work on right now, because Mars is this sense of I want it and I want it right now. And the square energy is like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you got to hold up a little bit for that. Because in order for it to happen, there's going to be some tension that has to be worked through. The good news is, though, once you work through it, it really works through it. It really gets it done. OK, so I think that that's like an exciting part that you can look forward to of this new moon energy. Now, on the flip side, Mars is in full support to the planet Mercury, which I almost see like these two energies canceling themselves out because Mercury is the ruler of Virgo and of Gemini. And we have here this really interesting conversation where Mercury is saying, hey, I just entered Libra. So I'm really trying to build peace right now. I'm trying to build um, a, networks and relationships and harmony with Mercury and Libra. I'm trying to bring more beauty to the world with Mercury and Libra. So maybe you're feeling like you're able to build peaceful repertoires now, peaceful connections with people, whereas before you had more of like a I just want to get through these logistics with you and not really worry about our relationship when Mercury was in Virgo. Maybe now it's more about the relationship. Maybe now you have words that express how you feel in a relationship, whereas over the last few weeks, you just didn't know what to say. Now you know what to say. You can speak your mind and you can get out what you want to get out and do it in a diplomatic way. Because Mercury, the planet of communication, is in the sign of Libra. And this is all just as we have the Virgo new moon. It's like no coincidence, right? Mercury enters Libra and bam, there's a Virgo new moon. So you have a new beginning that's allowing you to communicate more uh, robustly, more like in a harmonic, harmonizing, beautiful sort of way. 
And at the same time that Mercury is doing that in Libra, we have this really kind of fierce opposition between Jupiter and Aries and Chiron's over there for the ride as well. So you have this Mercury in Libra opposing Jupiter, the aqua looking four number thing, which is really just the Jupiter glyph, right? And they're forming a red line or an opposition between the two of them. So Mercury and Jupiter, you might say, as many astrologers do, are natural born enemies because they naturally rule opposing signs. Mercury rules, as I said earlier, Gemini and Virgo. And Jupiter, you guessed it, rules their opposing signs, Sagittarius and Pisces. Now, Jupiter in the sign of Aries is pretty good. Jupiter likes being in the sign of Aries. It's like a happy um, fire sign for Jupiter. You know, I mean, it's not like Jupiter doesn't know what it's doing. Whereas in some other signs, Jupiter might be like a little less well-suited, let's say, like maybe, I don't know, Mercury signs, uh, Virgo and Gemini. But, you know, Jupiter, generally speaking, it understands fire signs pretty well. So Jupiter is magnifying all this Aries energy. It's really saying, hey, it's playful, it's fun. And, you know, it could also be amplifying individualism at a negative level or like the sense of I'm the only one that counts or selfishness or anything like that. But generally speaking, Jupiter and Aries could increase on the higher end of things, more playful energy, more joyous, kind of like kid-like energy. And, you know, again, that can go both ways, but you get the hint. So anyway, that's in opposition with Mercury and Libra, meaning that there's a conversation to figure out between the conversation planet Mercury and the philosophy planet Jupiter. So where is it under the next two weeks that you can have conversations with people, Libra, in your life that you're in friendship or partnership with in some way, shape or form? that support the development and expansion of your personal Aries philosophy, Jupiter. I am working still on pre-recorded astrology school, and yes, we talk all about the substitute teacher method, which I love and teach, and that's just basically you switch out all of this stuff for one word, and when you start switching out each planet and sign for one word, it really helps you understand astrology better, so I just did an example of that right there, right? So anyways, I think that what we have to look forward to is our own mental kind of like positioning and philosophies being a little more open during this next two weeks. I think we're going to be a lot more receptive to improvement oriented energy over the next two weeks. That's hopefully right. Hopefully you're going to be along for that vibe. Um, what I would say not to do, don't play head games with people at this time. It's likely to end really poorly. Um, Mars in the sign of Gemini square the new moon. If you choose to screw around with people like that during this time, it could just have some really long term relationships, um, excuse me, relationship implications for you. So just don't do it would be my suggestion. I also think it's going to be a really good idea to just engage in a spirited philosophical conversation with your friends right now. It's a really great time to just share your thoughts with your friends, to have really thoughtful philosophical conversations with friends and the like. And last but not least, focus on building healthy habits. If Virgo loves nothing else, it is a good, solid, healthy habit great time to get with the yoga, great time to do the nutrition game, to cook yourself some healthy whole food plant-based meals. It's a great time for all of that. Great time for a late summer spring <laughs> clean, you know, stuff like that. It's really compatible. So yeah, that was a little bit of a intensive nerdy for all the Virgo energy out there in the world right now. Uh, overview of this Virgo new moon. I do hope it served you. Make sure you hit the like button. If it did, subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below letting us know how this new moon is working out for you. With that said, check out my website, wisdomdropsastrology.com for a reading with me. If you want to book your own personal deep dive into your personal chart and your personal questions. And with that said, through next time, until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.